Hey guys, how's it going today? I thought I would just come on here and say a quick hello and tell you guys what I'm up to lately. So right now, the project that I'm working on, I've been working on it for a couple of weeks and I'm super excited. I'm working on production development for a couple of sweaters. Since I started designing, I have been focusing on made to measure dresses and skirts and blouses and I, you know, during the winter, I want to wear something that's a little bit cozier, warmer, more comfortable. So I started thinking a couple months ago, I was like, why don't I have my own sweaters in my store? Like I should make that happen. So for the couple, last couple of months, I've been, you know, going shopping and looking, going into stores and seeing what's out there. And I've been researching online, you know, looking at my favorite brands and seeing what they're doing. I've, you know, I went into my own closet and looked at my own sweaters and thought about like, why do I like this sweater? Why don't I like this sweater? What do I like about it? What don't I like about it? And I've just been brainstorming. And I kind of went into this thinking like, oh, I just want a classic turtleneck cashmere sweater. No big deal. I just need to pick out my colors and I'm good to go. I know my price point, but you know, I'll work with the factories on that and we'll get there. And so I was starting to get my sample order together and I started to realize that it, there was a lot more that I needed to find out. Um, you know, one thing was there are sweaters that are selling for $1,000 and there are other uh, cashmere sweaters that are selling for under $100. So what's the difference between a $1,000 cashmere sweater and a $100 cashmere sweater? Like I need to know that before I order 100 sweaters from a factory because, you know, I don't want to get ripped off by the factory and I also don't want you guys to get ripped off by something that I make, uh, something that I sell. You know, when I want when I sell something, I want you to get the value that you're paying for. Like if you're if you're paying a hundred dollars, I want that sweater to be worth a hundred dollars. So, you know, if I want to make that happen, I need to know everything there is to know about cashmere. So I started researching cashmere and I found out um, one of the most interesting things I found out was that cashmere isn't as environmentally friendly as I thought it was. Um, you know, I was thinking it's a natural fiber, you know, they trim the hair off and it grows back and then they trim it off and it grows back. Like, you know, it's a natural fiber. It's the best of the best. But then um, when I was researching cashmere goats, uh, that was another thing. Like cashmere actually isn't a wool, it's a goat hair. So I was researching like what makes a cashmere, you know, I was researching cashmere and I came across the fact that um, cashmere goats are actually destroying some of the fields in Mongolia because there's so many cashmere goats and when they're eating the grass, they don't actually just nibble off the grass like a sheep does. They go and they tear the entire grass roots out of the ground. And then once that happens so many times, the topsoil is destroyed and nothing grows in those fields anymore and they're turning into deserts. Go online, there's, there's photos. It's kind of mind blowing actually. And if you think of how many cashmere sweaters are sold every single year, and you think of how many cashmere goats it takes to make one sweater, you know, you start to realize that it's having a major impact on the environment. So I started, you know, that started me on, that started me on another journey where I was trying to discover like what other types of wool are there, what other types of like sweater fibers are there. I don't want to go into acrylic or polyester. I have one sweater that's made out of acrylic and it's awful. Like it makes my skin sweat in a really weird way and I, I'm not a sweaty person, but it's just the fiber, it just makes me so uncomfortable when I'm wearing it. Um, so I'm definitely going to stick with natural fibers. I want to use natural fibers as much as possible, but I also don't want to use something that's really scratchy. I want it to be a nice soft sweater. So, you know, I was talking to a couple of people that, you know, no wool like the back of their hand. And they, some people said like super fine merino wool is a better option. You know, it lasts longer. Um, you know, the fibers are a little longer and it's just a better option than a cashmere sweater. But, um, so anyway, 
I ordered a couple different samples in, you know, super fine merino wool. I ordered a cashmere sweater, I, and then I found out that you can actually get regenerated cashmere, which is cashmere that has been used for other sweaters, but then like they're basically recycled. So I ordered a sample in recycled cashmere, and I'm really crossing my fingers that the recycled cashmere sweater comes, and it's amazing. But we'll see. We'll see what it turns out. You know, we'll see how it turns out. Um, and if the regenerated cashmere doesn't work, I'm hoping that the super fine merino wool is as soft as a, what I like. You know, I really like cashmere sweaters. They're super soft. So I don't want to, I don't want to lose the softness in the sweater, but I'm hoping to find another option. So we'll see. I ordered the samples a couple of days ago. They're supposed to arrive in early January. So I'm super excited. <laughs> like Christmas is next week. And I'm just as excited about next week in a couple of days, whatever. Um, Christmas is coming up so quickly, and I'm actually more excited about the samples than I am about Christmas because I've been working on these samples for forever, and I just can't wait to see like what the fibers actually feel like. But um, that's happening in early January, so by I would say mid-February, late February, I should be getting the sweaters in, and I'm super excited to share them with you. Uh, you know, and in addition to the fibers, like figuring out what kind of fiber that I wanted to um, have the samples made in, I also need to decide on different colors, and um, you know, through this entire process, you have to be you know, I have to find a factory that is willing to manufacture the sweaters in as many sizes as I want. Because most of the factories that I talked to, they were like, oh, sure, we'll make, we'll make 100 sweaters for you in three different sizes and two different colors. And I was like, three different sizes, that's small, medium, and large. Like, I need extra large and extra, extra large, too. Like, can you make it in five sizes? And they were like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll make it in five sizes in one color. And it's like, no, I need more than one color. So, like... You know, it's kind of like a, a kind of a process to find a factory that's like willing to work with me because I like I am a small designer. I, I'm not ordering like a thousand sweaters, so you know that's a process like finding a factory, figuring out what type of fiber you want, like making sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Like I have to make sure that I'm getting what I'm paying for so that you get what you're paying for. Um, and I, you know, through that all, through all of that, you have to make sure that the factory is, you know, paying their workers correctly. And you know, you, I mean, I am doing what I can on my end to make sure that the factories are, you know, paying their workers properly and everything. But I, you know, that's always, even if they have the papers, it's always a gamble. So. You know, it's it's a process, like finding a factory that's reputable, that is going to do what you want them to do in like, you know, all the sizes you want and the colors you want. So it's it's a process. But it's interesting and I've been I've been learning so much and I yeah, I can't wait to get the sweaters because I I am thinking of a couple different colors that are, they're like classic colors, but they're super fresh. Like they're, um, there's one blue sweater that I'm super excited about. It's like a super fresh color, but it's not, it's not like so trendy that you won't be able to wear it in five years. Cause that's the worst color. Like that's what mustard yellow is. Mustard yellow by, is actually one of my least favorite colors ever. But, um, you know, I don't want to order colors that are going to feel very trendy and current right now, but then in a the year, you won't want to wear them because I would be like, oh, that's a 2020 sweater. You know, like, I don't want that to happen. So it's a fun process, and um, I can't wait to share the sweaters with you. I hope that you like them as much as I like them. I hope you like the colors and everything else like that. So we'll see what the, we'll see what the samples look like, and I will update you once I receive them. In the meantime, I'm going to go back to work. I have to uh, respond to emails and stuff like that for the rest of the day. So I will be busy working. <laughs> I'm also doing some uh, research for another project that I'm looking into. 
I'm like kind of excited about it, but I don't know enough about it yet. So I'm going to have to spend a bunch of time on research and development before I am going to share it with you guys. I mean, that's honestly, you guys have no idea how much time as a designer is spent on research because, you know, when you're making a product, you have to know everything. You have to know like the fiber content, you have to know how it's going to fit together, you have to know how it's going to wear, how long it's going to last, how you have to take care of it, like what the price point's going to be. You have to like know where the best place is to source those things. You know, there's a lot of time spent on research. And then you actually have to make the sample, and then once the sample's made, you have to photograph it, and you have to market it. You know, it's, it's a big process, you know? And I, you know, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because like I often, I'll often make a blouse and I'll just share it on Instagram and be like, oh, look, here's a blouse that I made. And I won't talk about like how much time is spent in research and development and actually, you know, processing that sample. So, yeah, thought I would share that process with you. I hope you enjoyed today. I'll try to do this again next week. Um, and, yeah, the holidays are coming up. If you haven't done your gift shopping, like, I haven't. Um, good luck with that. <laughs> I hope that all of the people on your list are easy to shop for because it's really hard to shop for someone that has everything and is really particular. So I wish you the best with your gift shopping and um, have a great week. I will talk to you later. Bye.